Yeah, tough MAC game. You know, that's a that's a good Western team. They're they're well coached. You know, good players. They're four and one for a reason coming into the game, and uh, we knew uh, that this would be you know a hard fought battle. And uh, you know, we got dug a hole. You know, get down thirteen at that thirteen minute mark, and uh, to kind of swing around and get up sixteen. You know, that's a big big swing, and and they showed some potential of what we can be. Uh, you know, and we've we've got to continue to just work toward. Our potential, but all these mad games are going to come down to a couple of possessions. You know, the, all the teams are good, and, and, and you've just got to be able to close. And we've got some guys that are really good at closing. We did the tough things well. We made free throws. Uh, we had guys step up. We got five and double, you know, in double digits, and um, you know, nineteen offensive rebounds. So we, we did a lot of good things that we can take away from this and, and move forward. Expanding on the rebounding, I mean, to be able to put nineteen offensive rebounds and forty-seven rebounds against a team that can rebound just as well as you. I mean, just how important was that aspect? Because it, at times there's just so many critical plays where you guys were able to get that second, so second chance points. Yeah, and they're probably tired of hearing about it. You know, that's all that we challenged them. You know, as I say, hey, Western Michigan rebounding, and they're going to send four to the glass. They're going to do this. And they're going to do that. And you know, our guys were out to kind of kind of prove us wrong. So they, they did they did a great job in that area. And. Uh, you know our guards did a good job getting in the fight, and that's a that's a big strong team up front with at Western, and and uh, you know which requires a lot of toughness. Obviously, you've been playing such a limited bench, but for for Dejon and and UJ to have the games they had, especially scoring, you know how how important and critical is that? Because you know Dejon really provided this defensive spark to get yep. you going the first half, and then UJ provides a huge spark in the second. Yeah, they're 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 guys now that you know they need to play. They need to play. You know, we got to get EJ's role bigger. He's been doing it in practice. We've seen it, and uh, you know, and, and so his role's got to increase. Dejan's, you know, gives us such a, a weapon, and but more importantly, he got those three steals in, in 17 minutes. You know, and so now all of a sudden you start looking out there and you're, um, you know, getting stronger and stronger as the season goes on and. Um, and in PJ Edwards, you know, doesn't register a lot of stats, but as a guy that can switch with bigs and smalls, he does a lot of dirty work. So we're pretty happy with our bench play for sure. Just, I mean, PJ Greer, just the length that he has to be a guard and that quickness that he has, just, just kind of how special is just all that talent, you know, for a freshman, you know, to have his length, quick quickness and contribute the way he did. Yeah, I mean, it's very hard for true freshmen to, to, to get on the floor in, in Division One basketball, and it's especially hard to get on the floor on, you know, very good teams. And, and so he's kind of elbowed his way to the table and, and, and deserves, uh, you know, everything he gets. And when, when he got in, quite frankly, we, you know, once you get that first one in, it's another weapon that we could run plays for. We, were, we had we let him go out and create and use him as a weapon. and. Um, you know, he plays point guard in practice. We're grooming him to, to, to be a real playmaker for us, and and uh, his best days are certainly ahead of him. We've seen it all year from Marcus Hill and his, his ability to score, but I mean, when he takes over a game like he did in those last two minutes when it's only a one-point game, just kind of how special is it? You know, kind of just watching that and, and seeing him just be able to do whatever he wants and really finish strong off. Yeah, it's just a game of matchups. So, you know, we, we down the stretch, we figure if we can get him into a matchup that we like. And, and um, but it's more than just him. It's all the pieces kind of moving. You know, our, our big set great screens, and then they reseal, and our gu guards are cutting. We got split action. So, you know, normally it's hard for one player to kind of create, but he's creating lanes because his teammates are, are doing so much for him to, to give him room to operate. And, and that's as much of it as anything. And, and now when teams collapse, he's proven in Matt play that he'll just make the right pass and we'll beat you that way. And, and so if you stay home, then then you, you got to deal with them one on one. So it's a double edged sword and, and he's done a good job balancing it. Beyond matchups, though, is there a sense of like his tenacity, especially in those last two minutes of the fact that he felt like he was alone, surrounded by like three Broncos and still got all those boards and still bad ways to finish? Yeah, no, he's 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 built different in that way. You know, he's just got one of those guys. He's gonna will it into the basket, and uh, he loves scoring so much. I think maybe that's why he wants that ball. He want, you know, if he misses, he wants it twice as bad as he is the, the initial miss, so he can put it back in. So, uh, yeah, he's a unique talent down there. In Marcus Hills, he scored, I believe, twenty plus points in three straight games. I think it's seven or eight times this season. Can you just talk about how elevating this play in these big games, now Matt uh, play, 
and how it's just been consistent in getting double digit points and 20 point performances this season. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, you know, that transition from junior college to Division One is a big leap. And a lot of times it might take a year. And we sat down in the spring and summer and said, look, this ain't going to be fair, but if you want to be this guy that we think you can be, we got to speed up your process. And that's not going to always be roses every day. You're going to have to get extra time in and he, he embraces film. He, he works harder than, than, than the many guards I've ever had that have gone on to play this game for a long time. And uh, he changes shot in the summer. He, I mean, he did, he's embraced every coach ball aspect possible. And, um, and you're seeing the results and his best basketball is still ahead of him. You know, he's still coming on. It feels like Marcus plays 36, 37, 38 minutes every game. You just talk about his motor. And just, especially late games, he just finds a second, third win. Yeah, you know, and, and he, you know, I'm probably a little notorious for, for you know, rocking with my guys a little long and on the minutes and, and uh, you know, as as the emergence of, of guys coming up and EJ and Dejan getting healthy and those guys, I think we can we can probably get those minutes to be a little more, um, you know, spread out a little bit or give a couple more breaks for him and Trey. But uh, but he is he's, he's a workhorse and he doesn't seem to get tired and he's an elite defender. Right, and that's what we don't talk about is he turned himself into an elite defender on top of being a, 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 a scorer that, that really draws a lot of attention. This is now seven straight at home. Is there an importance, especially in that play, of like establishing your dominance on your own court? Yeah, we, we, there's an expectation that, we, that we, we don't lose at home. And, you know, it's a hard thing. You, you know, when you take over a program, there's a lot of times when, when it's – been struggling, right? I think we had like six winning seasons in 20 years. Like there was a, the, uh, almost an expectation to lose a, in terms of uh, the vibe around the, and, and you kind of turn that into you hope to win. And then you hope to change, change hope into, uh, you know, an expectation to win, right? And, you know, and right now our guys expect to win in that locker room. And, uh, and that can carry you through. There's a confidence that comes with that. And, you know, the next stage is when you expect to win championships. And, and, uh, but you can't skip steps. We got we to gotta just continue to work on the next game. What have you heard from, like, the community just as far as about the team? I mean, obviously, to have this start and to be playing this, you know, brand of basketball, you know, can be exciting and finding ways to win. You know, what, I mean, just what, is it, what have you heard? You know, what has it been like kind of going around the community and kind of hearing? Yeah, I think I think it's uh, the buzz is kind of getting around a little bit. I think it's kind of be like, hey, okay, it's okay to to come back, or you know, this is a good group, and and we have spectacular human beings. Like the the guys, you know, they're they're personable. They they're great classmates. You see them at every sporting event, and and it's not one or two; it's all of them. And, and you know, they're they're great with kids. They love kids. They're 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 interactive. You know what I mean? So it's it, it, even if we weren't winning, this is a group that's worth to get behind. But the winning makes it all that better. Going back to the rebounding, how much do you kind of harp on them in practice? I mean, are you telling them rebound, you know, every second, every play, yeah. every possession? Just kind of how much do you harp on rebound? Yeah, you know, our, so a few years back, I mean, we're a traditional, even on my last stop, where we're always top 50, top 25 uh, defensive rebound percentage in the nation. Um, and we don't do rebounding drills. We just stop doing them. But where there's an accountability, you're going you're gonna to have to do what you're supposed to do. We don't need to go out there and, and beat the crap out of each other and, and, and get everybody hurt to, to prove that point. Again, and at the end of the day, it's a consistency. So it's, it's more of a culture stat to me because that tells me that, that you're willing to do the hard stuff on every possession because it's hard. I got a guy taking a 20 foot head start and he's going to go smash right into my back at a high rate of speed. And I've got to stand there and make sure that the resistance is great and then go get it with two hands. And then I got to run 94 feet and try to score as fast as I can. That's our culture. And and so I think it's more of a culture thing. You like, mentioned the historic five and one, like nature of the five and one start in that play. For yourself, especially as a first year head coach, is this like meeting expectations that you had or exceeding expectations? Um and, and, you know, you want to get to these stages where you're you're you know, expecting to win has has come now. I think our guys expect to win, which is important. Um, you know, we we've we gotta to continue to find consistency. Is it my expectation, my, my whole thing is if we schedule 32 games, I want to win 32 games. Like, I don't like to say, oh, well, golly, I'd like to win 20. And to me, in my brain, the way I work is like, okay, I just said it's okay to lose 12. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't wake up and say like, hey, I'm okay with losing this one. No, I want to win every, every single one of them. I want to win every single possession. 
every single four minute media timeout. I want to win every single little four minute stretch. And, and so, you know, I kind of have the blinders on. And so I'm not a, I'm not a very satisfied human being overall. So it's probably the, probably the wrong person to ask, but. Rashawn AG has scored double digit points in 10 straight games. And he's got, I think, seven double doubles during that span. Can you talk about how he's just stepped up his game with you guys lacking some size due to injury too right now? Can you talk about how he's elevated his game? Yeah, what we're asking Rashawn and Jason to do is, is is way more difficult than people understand. Like, okay, hey, you know, Jason's 255 pounds and seven feet, and it's like, hey, you got to play 32 minutes of our style of play where we're going to get 80 possessions, which is 80 trips up and down the floor. And oh, by the way, like their seven footer is going to smash into you 50 times, and then you got to rebound, and then you got to do this. No, and, and and they have to play together, and so now, now you got to chase around like their three point shooter, and you got to chase him around the arc. It's extremely difficult. What what? where Sean and Jason are doing just from a pure workhorse energy effort expend, you know, type of deal. Cause you know, we don't have uh we don't have, you know, Jamai felt out for the year and, and uh, you know, Sam town's been out for quite a while. So they, they're, they're doing a great job. This Sam wasn't in a walking boot anymore. Is he looking close to returning? Any kind of thing? Yeah. You know, he's, he's trending in that direction. And um, so now we can in that stage where you start testing it out and see where he's at. And, you know, I think uh, um, safe to say we probably won't see, you know, DJ Smith probably done and, and uh, Jemai Felt obviously done. So that's two really important pieces. But, um, you know, Anthony McComb was back on the bench and, and, and getting healthy. And, and, uh, and hopefully we'll see Sam sooner than later. You guys scored 31 points off the turnover tonight. You had a lot of major steals. How important was it to take advantage of that momentum when you, when the players got it? Yeah, and, and and that floor starts getting tilted when you start getting some run out breaks and dunks and, and uh, stops in that regard. You know, it just usually it's a good indicator of our defensive energy. 